Okay. All right. Well, whilst he's pouring out a beer, let me introduce him. This is uh, Ross Cooper on the line. Ross, uh, I've been following your channel, which uh, Schwarzenegger underscore films underscore props, I think, on Instagram. I had it written down. Yeah, that's um, correct. Basically, uh, a homage and ode, a complete love affair with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, wanted to get you on the horn mate to talk about him and to talk about your channel so welcome to the show Ross thank you very much for having me thank you very much for having me well, so walk me through it maybe start from the beginning where do you think the love affair for Arnold began with you well I think with most most with most people you know when they see their first ever Arnie film you know obviously a person of my age would have been you know when early very early 90s so, you know, you see Commando and you see Predator and none of these, you know, films like that weren't, you know, really big at the time. So that's probably where it spanned for me. My father's a, you know, a bodybuilder. So that's obviously that helped the scenario. So instead of, you know, uh, some other movies that I could have been watching, it was majority of the time of Mr. Universe or Mr. Olympia films. So it's going to be, you know, a Predator, a Commando, a Conan. So uh, that's that's where it started, and it blossomed from there on. Um, and obviously, being a kid of the a, a kid growing up in the nineties, you had the the Kenner toys that were brought out, you know, like the little Terminators and Predators and stuff like that. So I could enjoy it as a child without being introduced to the the main the proper proper violence of the food, of the films, you know, of the later films. Right. Okay. I mean, so that's interesting. Yeah, because. What PG, what rating was Conan when it came out? I think Conan was an 18 when it came out, but, you know, it wasn't as graphic as films are today. Right. So and they wanted it to be, though, didn't they? They wanted it to oh, be a bit more. Well, this one was not, was, was as graphic as they were going to get. It was the Conan the Destroyer, which was part two. That's yeah. where they made it a bit more family friendly, That's which right. took a decline with fans. Um, but like most people in the, in the film industry now, they want to get as many people in the door as possible. Yeah. So they made it more friendly. Um, but I've spoke to a numerous amount of people that have been on the film and it was supposedly an absolute bloodbath. Oh, really? Um, so hopefully, maybe in a few years time or when it hits a certain anniversary, we'll get a director's cut and we'll get a completely different take of what Conan the Destroyer could have been. <laughs> okay, cool. I love the fact that we're lobbying for that. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, well, so hope so. Red oh, so, uh, Conan... Did that have mm -hmm. Bridget Nielsen in, or that that's Red Sonia, right? No, that's Red Sonia. Red Sonia was the third con. They, they, he was signed into a three-year, a three-film contract. Right. Um, so he did Conan, Conan the Destroyer, and he then said, "I don't want to do any more." Um, but the film industry tied him in. He said, "Look, you have to do this film," and he did Red Sonia. That's um, I, I know he hates it. I know he hates that film, and he used to threaten his kids if they misbehave, like Patrick, Christopher, uh, Catherine, for example, that if they misbehaved in the house, they had to sit and watch Red Sonja. That was their punishment. <laughs> I, love it. I also so, love that in the book, because uh, I, I think I read the book like last year, Total Recall is biography. And it, yes, you read about... it on your cruise, didn't you? That's right, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, well, I've got the audio book. I don't know if that counts as reading, but I mean, I listened to about 18 hours of that, which is... Uh, I really recommend it, by the way. I mean, it's a really, oh. really good book. Um, but yeah, the, the chapter on Red Sonia, he has an affair with Bridget Nielsen. And he goes, right, that's it. That's all good. That's all done and done. What happens on movies happens on movies. But she wanted to continue it when they got back, uh, back right. to LA or wherever it was. And then he's like, hold on, sweetheart. You know, this isn't going any further. You know, this was on the set, what happens on set. And she, she couldn't quite wrap her head around that. Um, so, yeah. well, he he started ties with Maria Shriver at the time. So obviously ah. it was just a, an on-set thing, a fling. And then obviously when they got back to the real world, everything settled down. But it, it didn't, it, you know, she didn't do too bad. She married Sly. That's right. Yeah, she went on and married Sly. It's amazing how great friends, I think that's one of the most touching friends that I see on social media is Arnold and Sly. Because it's endured it so, over the years, right? Oh, so wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it wasn't them because they were really jealous. No, no, no. And that's probably why these two, Sly and Arnie, are the, the two biggest action stars ever. And they will always be because they were always trying to better each other. Right. So they were, you know, like he always used to say is, you know, who's got the bigger guns, who's got the bigger knives, who kills people the best, 
you know, who's who's got the biggest gross, who's got the biggest boss for box office, who's got the best directors. They're always trying to better themselves. Yeah. So yeah. that's where the Arnie and Stallone fandom really, you know, grew. And, and that's how they got all these big movies and the big budgets. And they brought out all these amazing films. I mean, it's what film is it where... Is it Sly looks at a poster of Arnold on the wall and just kind of smirks to himself? Like vice versa. So they do have little jibs at each other throughout their film careers. So you've obviously, for that one, you're talking about his twins in 88, right. where Arnie's walking down a street and he sees a picture of, I think, a Rambo 3. He looks at Sly's muscles. He looks at his own <laughs> muscles and sort of waves it off. <laughs> and then it's little jokes like that. And then obviously Stallone had Demolition Man, where it was the Schwarzenegger library when he right. was in the future. Um, but yeah, they, they, they always take little jib, uh, you know, little jibes at each other. But it was it, at the end, it was more friendly than anything else. But at the time, they really hated each other. Yeah, <laughs> but it's great. I mean, you see, I see all the old photos of them tangoing now at Cannes in like the the eighties and nineties, yeah. and it's it's just quite touching. When they, I, I remember seeing one when they both went into an operation at the same time in the hospital. I don't know if you yeah, saw that. Yeah, I, I, I think that was for his uh, first heart bypass. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing in there. But they, they kind of met each they, they bumped into each other on the operating table. Like, what are you doing here? I'm just fixing this up over here. Got a shoulder out of joint or a heart. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, Ross, getting back to you, getting back to the channel. Uh, I mean, you're really prolific on Instagram. That's one of the things I really like. It's almost like a, a daily surge of new stuff. It's not just like a, a picture of Arnold with his vest off on a movie poster or something. You have a lot of the behind the scenes stuff or old Letterman interviews, etc. How do you go about planning the content for your channel? Well, I think it's, it's, I sort of just feel how I just, it depends on how really I feel. Obviously, there might be a movie anniversary coming up. So let's say there's, you know, 30 years of Conan, for example, I'll try and bring out the trailer or a cut scene or a behind the scenes uh, of it. Um, or if it's a celebrity's birthday or a co, you know, a co-star of Arnie's birthday, that sort of gets you in the door with them. Um, so it's a tent somewhere in Total Recall today because it's ah. Sharon Stone's 54th birthday today. And obviously she was in Total Recall. Um, and I think it sort of span off from there and everyone, and I, I did a poll at, I think start of one of the years when I did it, I was like, what do you want to see? Because there's so many Arnie fan, uh, Arnie pages um, on Facebook, Instagram, all the other play, all the other social media sites, and it's just all like you say, it's just pictures or of old bodybuilding photos. There's no context to it. It's just I'll post it and then I'll go on for the rest of my day. So I asked the fans that are following me already, what do you want to see? And they were like, we want to see more behind the scenes. We want to see more news. We want to see this, that, and the other. So I try to forte it to what people want to see. And luckily enough, people have flooded in. Um, so, and we're not talking, you know, random Joe blogs from Iran or Scarborough or wherever. We're talking some big hitters. So, you know, I, the first famous person that really followed me or really, really took some interest was Bill Duke. Oh, wow. Um, he's an absolute legend in my yeah, eyes because he yeah. was in Commando and he was in Predator and he was obviously yeah. Action Jackson with, you know, Carl Weathers again. And he does some really, really good films later on. But and when he started following me, I was like, well, I've, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting a big hit here. Um, and then after that, I was getting uh, Maria, Alonso, uh, Maria Conchito Alonso from Running Man. She, she's joined. Um, I've got a um, couple of people from Conan the Destroyer. I've got three or four of the original kids from Kindergarten Cop. Oh, um, I've that's got, great. Um, I've, and obviously since recently, I've just picked up Joe. Uh, Arnold's son. Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah, he's following me now. So we and him have a little chat on the odd occasion. But it's it's helpful for my channel because obviously if there is a prop that's come available, or I need a little bit of backstory to it, or do you, can you remember how many there were? Because it wasn't just one prop. It was just you know there's multiple props on set. So I could ask these these actors and actresses that were on you know on the set. I could say, can you remember using this, or is there a backstory? Was there a story with this? And nine times out of ten, they'll come back to me and say, oh yeah, this happened, or you know, oh I, oh, I remember that one, or oh I can't remember that. Where did you find that, for example? And it sort of opens more doors for me. Yeah, and also it must be good for these actors and actresses as well to see all these old behind the scenes stuff going on. It's kind of 
you know, old footage that you don't really get to see anymore. You, I guess you have to kind of go through the annals of the internet to find some of this stuff half the time. So they'll be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've not seen that in about 30 years. Thanks for showing it to me. Well, you say that. Literally about 20 minutes ago, uh, Maria Alonso, she reposted an interview I posted a couple of weeks ago of her and Jesse Ventura on a US talk show from 1987. And so she, like, like you say, they, they haven't seen these stuff for years. And so have, and have done so much stuff in their lives and so many sets and so many actors and so many directors. They forget half this stuff. You know, once once they're finished on the movie, they're shh, clean, yeah. slate, on to the next project. Just so like me and my say, interviews, Ross. As soon as this is done, shh, I'll be uh, opening well, up another five you know, cans of beer and that'll be it. I'll, I'll just about remember to upload it. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, not um, so, I mean, I know that uh, speaking to Nick from Banff Style, he, uh, he has like a spreadsheet of stuff that he plans. Like, so whoever's birthday is coming up, um, he'll kind of tie some stuff in like that. Do you kind of figure out, oh, it's Sharon Stone's birthday today. I forgot, fuck, I'll upload something. Or do you kind of have that down the pipeline? Already have it in the pipeline. So I know that already this month, I know it sabotages uh, one of the anniversaries. I've got it written down in the book, but it's the movie Sabotage's anniversary this month. And then well, I think next month there isn't any, but then the, the next building up to the summer, it's just constant you know, anniversaries, you know, Conan, Predator, yeah. uh, True Lies. So I've got them all in the pipeline, ready to rock and roll. So all I've got to do is amend it, edit it, job done, post it. That's it, be, be done for the rest of the day. Love it. And yeah, I guess the summer is going to be your peak time because he's summer action, blockbusters in the oh, summer, right? 100%. Well, people go to the cinema then, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, so just, you mentioned... Uh, props and stuff like that early on i know that you've been down to the archives at prop store yeah so talk about some of the relationships you have with the auction houses do they reach out to you or vice versa so so the reason i started this page is because obviously i left the military and obviously i found on social media via facebook that arnie was doing a, um, a live interview in the uk with an experience with Ah, okay. Um, yeah, um, and they're great people there. Um, and I went, and it's always been a tick in a box for me. It's always been a life dream to meet him, which I did. So I've met him twice. I've shook his hand. I've, you know, I've been to his live events, and the, and since then, after picking up my first auction piece, which was this replica Winchester shotgun behind me, which is signed by Arnie. No, I picked the T two one. Yeah, yeah, T2 shotgun. So obviously not original because I'll, be I'll be a millionaire by now. <laughs> um, but ever since then, I was like, well, what more is there available? And so I, I, you know, I searched and searched and I found out that, you know, this company, Prop Store, existed. And I never heard of them before. I think it's probably because I was on my, you know, in the military and I was in my, in my bubble. So, so I bought my first piece, which was the sixth day costume, which I've got beside me. And ever since then, I've just been bugged and bugged and bugged. And then luckily, I say luckily for us, luckily for some people, unlucky for some other people, my missus got, my wife got pregnant. So resources then got moved in a different direction. Uh -huh. so, uh, so I bought, I think she allowed me to buy one more piece, which had literally gone up sale that day. I, I begged and I pleaded on my knees. I said, look, there's one from Sabotage. It's screen matched with the blood splatter on the shoulder. Is there any chance? And she said, okay, fine. That's your last piece you can buy. Thank you very much. So long story short, at the end of that, the baby's born, but I still got the bug. What, what do I do? I haven't got the income now to buy any of this stuff. So my wife in introduced me to Instagram. I was like, what the hell is Instagram? It's just, you know, random crap, you know, here, there and everywhere. And, I, and she's like, okay, well, let me show you what this, what Instagram is all about. And I was like, oh, okay. So I wonder if anyone would be interested in seeing these props that when they become for sale, people will, you know, if want to buy them. Because if I can't buy them, I might as well pass on the knowledge to people that can. And ever since then, it's grown. And I, I to, to go back to your question, uh, I emailed uh, Stephen. Stephen Lane. Uh, Stephen Lane, um, which you've had on your show previously. Um, and I emailed him, I just said, look, I'm, 
I've bought a few things from you before. Obviously, I can't afford it now. Is there any, would you mind if I advertise some of the Urani stuff that comes up, up for sale, you know, put it online. And he was like, you crack on, you, you go for it. It's free advertising for him. So you crack on. Um, and I did. And since then, you know, they've, they've contacted me and said, oh, you're doing a really good job. And, you know, we'd like to get you, you know, come down to the auction. You can come down to London. We'll take care of you. And, and, you know, I went to see the London auction live, which I highly recommend when it's back live, when it's back in London live again, I recommend you come with me. Um, oh, power, we're there. They fed me with booze and popcorn all day, and I got to see all this stuff, you know, sell for thousands and thousands of pounds. Cool. And after the auction, they said, yeah, we'll have to get you down to H- you know, the headquarters, you know, we'll introduce you to some of the team and blah, blah, blah. Um, and ever since then, we've had really, really close working relationship. You know, they, they feed me some information. They say, oh, this auction's coming up. Get ready for it. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Or... This the the Los Angeles auctions coming up. We've got this Arnie piece, this Arnie piece, this Arnie piece, and this Arnie piece. And I go, thank you very much for the heads up, because then I can start editing videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. getting the heads up. Yeah. Um, and and at the end of at the end of the year, when the London one happens, they always invite me down earlier than most people, and before they, even the catalogs are re- released, and I get to go down and play with this stuff. So nice. I but- think not a lot. Last year, the year before, I played with Conan Swords, the Wolf, the PPK from GoldenEye, um, yeah. the Hellraiser box. Uh, it, I've had loads of stuff. It's been amazing what they've done for me. Well, there's so I had this thought. There's lots of Bond influencers, quote unquote. You know, lots of Bond content creators, I should say. So I do feel like that box is ticked by the main heavyweights. Uh, I don't see a whole bunch of Arnold Schwarzenegger you know, I want to say fanatics, you know, you know, people that are really into promoting him, loving him, having some archives, but also being very, uh, you know, present on social media. I mean, I know you say there's a bit of a community, but outside of you, how many dudes are doing this in the UK? UK? Don't know. Oh, uh, right. Not many. So, so. Not, not, not many. But it's just, there's like you say, there's, there's, there's a few, but not UK wise, I know, mm. but there's very... Yeah. They're very specific. They're, a lot of them are very bodybuilding orientated. Um, um, or, or they're just random. I'll post anything and see what sticks. Where I found a hole in a niche in the market where it's specifically for movies. I do chuck a few bodybuilding stuff up because the Arnold Sports Festival UK and the Arnold Sports Festival in the US and Ohio follow my page. So I thought it's a bit rude if I don't advertise a few of their bits now and again. Yeah, yeah makes sense. So you mentioned you you met him twice. So what can you remember the the best parts of the interaction? What was what did he say? What did you say? Um, excuse the French. I shit myself the first time. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I, on my hands were sweating. I couldn't even look at him. He was yeah, yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir. Shook his hand, walked off. So you're in a queue. Is it like a queue of people going yeah, yeah. past the table? Is so, he signing books and stuff? Yeah, so the experience with stuff, I, I don't know why I'm plugging them, but I'm going to. Um, they do these massive um, dinner venues where it's literally you get a four or five course meal. It's a massive auction where Arnie's or, or a celebrity has signed loads of you know, items on that day. You know it's legit. Um, then you'll get like a, a 60 minute interview with th- that said per celebrity on stage. And then whoever's paid extra can go ask the interview and go get in a queue, shake his hand, have a photo with him and then crack on. Right. So I was lucky enough to, be, to have gone to two of them, but the, the, co- the experience with companies had Sly, um, Pacino and Dam. They've done quite well for themselves. Yeah, it's such a good idea. I reached out to them ages ago and asked if I can get on the back of that and didn't hear anything back. I never hear anything back, but it's fine. I imagine they, yet they had quite a lot of people asking the same thing. But Very I mean, so, I mean, yeah, just, that must be so cool though, because I know what it's like to queue up. I had this with Lazenby when I, when I queued up and uh, spoke to Lazenby at his uh, the BFI 50th. Yeah. 
Uh, and it was a long queue. We were right at the back of it. It's, it's worse when the queue's really long and you arrive late to it because then you've got longer to sweat, you know, and maybe a pl- play out a couple of things in your mind, what you're going to say. And then when, it, when you get there, you just kind of compliment them on what they're wearing and it's always shit. They never know what to say either. And you sign it and you fuck off. And then it's kind of like that, you know. But you got to think, well, what was, what, what was going to be the end game? Were they going to say, oh, Ross, come back to mine. You know, you, you sound like you know your own. Let's watch Red Heat together. You know? <laughs> You're never going to get that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, but no, it was, it was definitely an unbelievable experience meeting Arnold. Definitely. Oh, mate, very so unbelievable. You, well, you, you look at him, you know, or any, you know, even, you know, for you, if it was a Sean Connery or Roger Moore, it's not Roger Moore, it's James Bond. So you look at him and you think, you know, that's Russia with love or that's, you know, Piers Brosnan yeah, from yeah. GoldenEye. I used, and then when you queue up Siani, you know, you can imagine the face paint on from Predator yeah. or Commander or something like that. And then, you know, your childhood sort of flashed between, you know, in front of your eyes. Yeah. Hey, just before I got you on the blow, I, I pulled up the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies ranked on Rotten Tomatoes. And mm-hmm. uh, I thought maybe I'll go through it with you and see if I can get your, get your take. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, they got 38 films on here. We'll just kind of skip by that. We'll start from the bottom. Got The Villain from 1979. Not yeah. Really, yeah. Um, um, I think that one was the Michael Douglas. Not Michael Douglas. The father. What was oh, the Kirk father's Douglas. Name? Yeah. So I think, yeah, it was Villain or Cactus Jack. I think it was just the also, also the second name for it, the alternative name for it. Ah, it's just got The Villain here, but that's interesting. So, uh, yeah, not seeing that. But then you got Batman and Robin, which... Classic. Absolute classic. <laughs> classic. <laughs> Love it. Love the commitment. Um, End of Days, which I didn't think was too bad. I remember seeing that at the cinema. Yeah, that was released in 1999. That was a really good film. But that was the, the studios obviously wouldn't take a chance on him after before that because he literally just had his heart bypass. Ah. So he took End of Days... But he was offered other films, I think, around the time of when I Am Legend was about with Will Smith. Right, yeah. They were offering him things like that. And he was like, no, I want to take a different avenue. Um, and End of Days was one of them. And he took it. But he wanted to make sure he was committed and ready for it because if all the studios were worried about insurance and because of his heart. And, they, you know, but End of Days proved that he was, you know, back among the greats again. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I had the Gabriel Byrne as the possessed devil, and yeah, I remember that's that right. one. Um, Robin Tunney. Uh, you got Red Sonia. We touched upon Jingle All the Way. Classic. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a Christmas classic, you know. And I, I spoke to on numerous occasions the director, um, and he follows me on Instagram. Bless him. Um, well, and obviously Jim, Bel- Jim Belushi was in it. Um, you got a big show from the, you know, Paul Paul Wright from the wrestling world. He was in it. Little Vern Troy uh, from yeah. Austin Powers. He was in it. Right. So you had, some, you had some big hitters in that one. I do like seeing that at Christmas. I've got to say that is that is one that comes up that I'll always sit through when it comes on. Well, it, it can't be gone too bad because of the Turbo Man toy craze this year. Oh, really? What's that? Yeah, did you not hear about this thing? Because obviously the the Pop Funko or whatever their company is in the states. They brought out Turbo Man toys again for the 25th anniversary of the film. Uh, And they were flying off the shelves in Walmart. Um, And luckily enough, I got to get one because they are completely non-existent and they are worth a lot of money. So Nice. Nice time. I like that. Um, Hercules in New York. That was one of the very early ones. The very first one. And that was when his voice was dubbed. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I don't think I've seen it. Uh, collateral damage. Uh, that's not bad. That's not that That was bad. delayed. That was delayed heavily because of September 11th. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I remember reading about that. They put that way back. And that was the only, I think that's one of the first films. He hasn't got a gun. Oh, okay. Well, he still trashes up an office. I remember that. He goes in oh, and yeah, he goes... Up an office with a baseball bat and he, I think right. he, he kills two people with an axe at the end, but he doesn't have a gun in the entire film. <laughs> um, at 31 they've got Sabotage I love that film yeah, yeah I've seen like that David Ayres, David Ayres film it had an all star cast like uh, You've got Sam Joe Worthington Mac- yeah. yeah yeah so there's some big hitters in that one uh, but it, everyone I think everyone complained it was a little bit too uh, 
blood soaked is the word I think that a lot of people were using. Right. It was a bit too violent for some people. Oh, they can go fuck themselves. I mean, the whole thing with Arnold, right? Growing up, so I'm a, I, I'm a bit older than you, I think. I'm a, about eight, ten years older than you. And I watched Commando, Predator, Total Recall way too young. I mean, I, I must have been like eight, nine watching these films, right? And yeah, so they, they, also, they had this kind of weird like, forbidden fruit to them that you shouldn't be watching them. And they are the most graphic things you've ever seen. Like Robocop has kind of throw those sort of films into the mix. You know, you should never be yeah. watching these films when you're celebrating. I still have nightmares about Predator because that's kind of hardwired in. I still dream that I'm running away from them three dots. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of weird. But then you think, well, sabotage, that's too violent. I mean, come on, that's, that's kind of what you get, really, isn't it? That's what you sign up for. Um, moving on. Uh, 30, what, Raw Deal. Yeah, Don't that was... The, and Bake. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the one. Yeah, that's the one. That's the mafioso film. Because supposedly back in the... I think it was 88 was that one. Uh, or 86? 86, Could be 86. Yeah. 86, yeah. Um, I think everyone was going a bit through a bit of a mafia... St- craze then so he i think he was asked to jump on the bandwagon right uh that's better than 29 percent. that's way better uh conan the destroyer so that's mm-hmm. the second one right second one correct and um, terminator genesis with 27 percent mm-hmm. uh yeah I, I didn't actually rate genesis i don't know what, what were your <laughs> thoughts it was all. It was all right. I didn't mind it. It was better than Terminator Three because I and I was super excited to see Terminator Three. Um, and obviously, after the first ten minutes of watching it, I turned it off because Terminator is a sci-fi or sci-fi horror. Mm. And then you know when it's talked to the hand or put the sunglasses on and he walks into a a gay strip joint, I'm like, no, I'm done. Get off. Turn <laughs> off. So, oh, I quite like Terminator. Like, so years later, I watched it fully, and it was wasn't actually that bad. But Genesis was fine. Ah, uh, yeah, I I just remember watching Genesis and thinking they're trying so hard to tie loose ends and make the narrative work. They keep on telling me what the story is, and I'm like, can you just fucking stop trying to do all the exposition and just kind of crack on with it? Um, well, I've got a sweet spot for Genesis because I've got Arnie's costume here. Ah, oh, really? From Genesis. So. Nice. What have you got? The leather jacket? Uh, no, I've got. We'll, we'll spin around that. Yeah, end. we'll do that. We'll do Cheers a spin around. For people that are listening to the podcast, uh, Ross has got the an amazing kind of shrine of Schwarzenegger props and costumes behind him. Um, Expendables three. Is that Expendables two? Is the one where him and Bruce really get the guns and Sly kind of blow that's, stuff up? Yeah, that's. That's right, yeah, it's him, um, and obviously Van Damme joined the cast as that's well. That's right, yeah, as Villain. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my favourite one out of the three. So, ah. But they obviously are filming number four. That's right. So, or, so, they yeah, they finished filming it, right? They, they, that's in post I believe they finished filming it. Yeah, yeah. they finished filming it. Obviously, they've got um, Eddie Hall is going to be in it. Uh, obviously, Stallone is... I think this film is more of a handover. To stay from Stallone to Jason. Yeah. Yeah. So great idea. I think he's been at the start and then who knows what he happens to his character, but yeah, it's gonna be a handover. Uh Junior at 38%. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um Last Action Hero, still not seen it, unbelievably. Uh I've You've not seen it. It's, no. it's a classic action comedy classic. The one who done you know, Shane Black wrote it and it was directed by John McTiernan. Yeah. And it's just a piss take to all action films. You know, it's over the top, there's over the top puns over the top explosions it's just like a homage to action movies just just with a comedy element to it um Uh, and that was the hit that sort of took um arnie's career you know that was the one of one of the main ones that hit arnie's career because in 1993 is the same year jurassic park came out right and obviously it doesn't matter what film come out it could have been titanic avatar you know nothing was going to beat jurassic park back then in 1993 so this so, was the first chink in the armour for him in terms pretty of... Pretty much, yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, Eraser at 38%. Always fancy yeah, to well, yeah. That was the one with James Cann in it. Um, that was a good film. That was good yeah. uh, back in late, mid, mid, late 90s. Yeah, mid 90s. yeah, 96. Yeah, I always liked that. I didn't think that was too bad. Yeah, was Sixth Day, that's the, the clone film, I think, with the guy from Ghost in it. Yeah. I remember, yeah. yeah, one with uh, one from the year 2000, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so Aftermath is uh, there with 42%. I actually really liked Aftermath. <laughs> no, not for you? <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was not the typical Arnie film you would see. Don't be wrong, that really helps. That really shows the acting range he's got. Um, and really moved him from just the action genre to something else, more of a drama, more of a thriller. Uh, I, it was all right. It was not my cup of tea. I still watched it. I still bought it on Blu-ray, but it wasn't completely my cup of tea. Yeah, I don't know if I'd watch it again, but I felt like this was the most interesting thing I'd seen him do post-election, like post-political career. Um, yeah, well, I think that's the only film that's actually based on a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the one about the, the pilot that... No, sorry, the, the guy on the Mar ground. Air traffic control, bull stuff. Yeah. Um, and the two cr planes crashed, I believe. And yeah, so the the husband from Finland or somewhere in Scandinavia went hunting for this air, airline uh, air traffic controller. Yeah, yeah. And and then, well, you can watch it, but he killed him if you were. But yeah, <laughs> uh, you got the original Expendables at number twenty one, forty two percent. The original Expendables. And twins with forty one percent. That's way too low for twins. You can't have. Well, unfortunately. Percent. I think Rotten Tomorrow and all the other all the other ones are never going to score it highly. Uh, I think they have, you know, he's he's it's just the way it is. He's, uh, they, uh, whoever's running it or whoever's doing it, they you know they obviously don't like these sort of action films. Stallone, yeah. of all his you know his films, Bruce Willis films, have always been you know hit hard, except the the real exceptional ones. I mean. I mean, the tagline for this film's great. The uh, only only the mother can tell him apart, or something like that. <laughs> and you got, and this was his like most lucrative film, wasn't it? Because the deal that he signed, he made uh, a shed ton on this compared to his. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was Robert Williams that introduced um, him to Ivan Reitman. Um, I think it was him. He, him and Robin were having a bit of a laugh, and Robin Williams said, "You know, you've got a hell of a comedy mind there." Now, I'll have to introduce you to Ivan, and God bless him. Um, and and it will sort of span from there. And obviously, Ivan and Arnold we got together. And then after that, they, you know, who 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 could you foresee being your you know twin brother? You know, you know, think of Dolph Lundgren or someone like that. And he went, no, I want someone complete opposite. You know, so they thought, who who who's complete opposite? Danny DeVito. <laughs> Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what people say about me and Jason Statham. Well, they say it about. Oh Statham. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's a, it's a visual gag as well as anything else. So. And you got. I mean, in the book, it was weird because reading the book, which I think came out 2012, 2014, they're talking about twins two, and that they've just signed a deal to do it. And I'm like, oh god, that was like eight years ago. And this script for twins two has just been chugging around for ages right well they've got it uh, more in the works now um so obviously eddie murphy declined it because he was originally going to be the third brother triplets that's right, that's right. but uh eddie murphy his timetable got hit quite hard with the success of his new netflix uh next netflix film the 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 second film of his quite a renowned one from the 80s Oh, uh, <laughs> Christ, yeah, that, that one. yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, whatever. Uh, oh, coming to America. Coming... Yeah. There you go. So obviously, that one did quite well. I've not seen it, but supposedly it did quite well. Um, and his timetable. He's got a lot more offers coming through at the moment. So he declined tri triplets. Um, and it's it was scheduled to start uh, filming filming in January, February, March time in Boston, Massachusetts. But obviously that's taken a hit now because Ivan Reitman uh, died last uh, month. Yeah. Um, so I think they're looking for a new director. And I think they're going to be starting it again uh, at the end of the year, but we'll see what happens. All right. Man. Uh, Killing Gunther with 46%. Not seen it. Any good? It's not a bad film. Uh, Arnold's hilarious in it, but in but he's only in it for the like the last 15, 20 minutes. Oh, really? Not better than Twins, though, surely. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. No, not at all. Uh, Kindergarten Cop with 51%. That's a solid movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't, you can't go wrong with that one. Um, Ross, I'll tell you what, mate. I'm going to have to cut this in half because I've got a call at seven. 
So we'll, if you've got time, maybe next week or something, we're going to wrap this up and we'll do it. We'll do take two of this next week because I, I need to get you back on and we'll, we'll run through this and we'll also run through your, your collection. Is that all right? Yeah, 